So breaking tonight, growing questions about Dr. Anthony Fauci's conduct regarding those emails and concerning the debate over the origins of the coronavirus. His critics say his positions have been inconsistent at best, deceptive at worst, but he continues to have the full support, publicly at least, from the president. White House correspondent Peter Ducey has details tonight live from the North Lawn. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Brett. President Biden campaigned on a promise to hire Dr. Fauci and fire Donald Trump. But now there are new questions about what kind of counsel Fauci was giving the former president as there are new calls for him to be fired. I mean, how many more times does this guy need to lie before he's ousted? This is Senator Marco Rubio's problem. Fauci has repeatedly demonstrated a history of moving goalposts when it comes to public health, withholding facts that don't conform with his own narrative, and issuing inappropriate personal judgments that distort the truth. But for now, Fauci's job is safe. Just since you mentioned Dr. Fauci again, can you imagine any circumstance where President Biden would ever fire him? No. Fauci's inbox early in the pandemic contained word that it's possible COVID-19 was not natural, but engineered, although experts don't think that means Fauci had bad intentions. Early on, the email that's being focused on is a so-called smoking gun, if you will, is an email Tony received from some really good scientists suggesting that they felt this could have been an engineered pathogen early on. Two experts now write in the Wall Street Journal, the scientific evidence points to the conclusion that the virus was developed in a laboratory, but the Chinese are withholding critical data from the World Health Organization. So there's a reason why after a plane crashes, we do everything possible to understand what happened. If, we're not, if we don't learn those lessons, there are other planes that are in the air. Uh, for all we know, the next pandemic is just around the corner. The White House has been diplomatic about the lack of cooperation so far. I have personally and we collectively have been quite vocal about our view that there needs to be a second round to this investigation that truly gets to the heart of the matter, which is the original data and original information that is still being withheld by China. And our hope is that in the coming months we will see a credible international investigation progress, uh, including in respect to those items. But that might be tough. China has basically already said they think their part in an international investigation is done. So why is Jake Sullivan still here saying he thinks it's possible that they're going to provide the preliminary data? Well, I don't think we just give up that easily. Uh, we are going to continue to press in coordination with the international community. Just outside the door to the West Wing right now, the Secretary General of NATO is holding court with reporters after a long meeting with President Biden. We didn't see President Biden on camera at all today. He did send his top diplomat, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, to Capitol Hill, though, and uh, to testify in front of Congress, I should say. And while he was doing that, Blinken said he cannot put a percentage on the likelihood that COVID may have leaked out of a lab in China. Brett. You know, Peter, a bit of a stir uh, that President Biden or the White House did not put out a statement, a tweet or a post commemorating D-Day. Why? Yes. Yeah. And Brett, when I asked an official here about that, they directed me to the president's remarks last week on Memorial Day, where he did mention the beaches of Normandy while commemorating Memorial Day. I, but I did not get a clear answer from or a clear explanation from Jen Psaki when I asked her why it is that presidents Bush, Obama and Trump all commemorated D-Day on D-Day, but Biden didn't. And she says that D-Day is something the president has talked a lot about and we may hear more about in coming days. Brett. Okay, Peter Ducey live on the North Lawn. Peter, thanks.